All right, today we're going to look at my knife collection. And I thought I would start with this finger knife. And it's really more like a finger stabber than a knife. Uh, this one's quite nice and it really responds well with the anatomy and how your finger moves. Um, I have some others. I have this one as well. And it also moves quite well with my finger. Very responsive and quick about it. Now, a true finger knife I have is this one. This is by far the most vicious and serious. And it works with the whole finger as one. It doesn't have any moving parts like the others. But you can see how well this fits on. I like to uh, wrap this chain around my wrist to kind of hold it on better. It does want to fall off. Um, I did have to like fashion it on the inside where my finger stays in better. Had I not done that, it would just kind of boop. The smallest knife I have is actually right here. I treated myself to this beautiful brass mermaid for the winter solstice. Look at her cute little bum. <laughs> her, she's like all contoured. I have a fixation with metal in general and the fact this is brass really won me over. I thought it was very lovely, you know, for a necklace and the fact it's a knife really won me over. My next smallest knife is actually on my keychain and um, you can see this abalone shell inlay with the embossed brass. And the blade is Damascus steel. Um, I don't know if it's going to show up in the camera, but with Damascus steel, it has a pattern that almost looks like wood grain. And it has to do with how they forge the metal folding a variety of types and alloys into one another. And it gets a layering effect. I really hope you can see it. One of the first knives I bought for myself is this. So we have a stainless steel blade with brass and steer horn. This one's really lovely. I like to keep this one in my truck and the side door there. survival knife I treated myself to also around the winter solstice and what I love about this you have a full tang knife here and what that means is the blade runs the complete length of the entire knife into the handle in this case the handle is the paracord but um some knives, they attach the blade to the handle at about this point, and a knife like that is not as durable because it can break. Um, this I love a lot because it comes with a fire strike, and it works like this. I don't know if you can see the sparks coming off of it. And you can light a fire with this. Um, well, I have this diving knife here, and, um, it actually oops, straps to the leg like this, and the last time I wore this was when I went snorkeling the other day, uh, and, uh, it opens like this. 
And uh, I don't know if you've been hearing, but there are a lot of shark attacks off of the uh, coast of Florida here, and they've had more attacks this year than anywhere in the world. And my diving companion had a spear while I was armed with this. I mean, I'm no match for a shark, but at least this way I have a fighting chance. Um, I like knives that are easy to conceal. Um, knives don't have to be big to be effective. I have this one here. And it's a twin set of pewter knives. This is the larger of the two. So they're not exactly twins. It's kind of like big sister and little sister. I think these are very beautiful. And I really appreciate this uh, little jagged curve and then how it swoops up here. Uh, let's see. Compare them side by side on size. And trust me, if you had to defend yourself, it won't matter here if this is going into someone, okay? <laughs> It'll be enough to get their attention and get them the fuck off you. Trust me. Um, this is my bedside dagger. Ready to go. Just like that. We don't want any trouble. <laughs> it has this nice clamp too where you can attach it to your waistband. But you really need like kind of like jeans. If the fabric's too soft or flimsy or uh, elastic, it wants to pull it down. But this has a beautiful embossed etched metal design on the blade. And that is just lovely. Onyx. Onyx has a history of being used as talisman for um, protection, actually. I really appreciate metaphysical qualities of stone and also folklore, magic, and that sort of thing. But uh, I collect stones and fossils as well as different metal things. I have this other bedside dagger, uh, brass, and it has this little faux ruby button. You have to push to open it. And it has a uh, design on it. It's got this serrated edge here. This is a knife that really means business. I like how this contours and fits the hand as well. This design, it's running stallions. This was actually broke when I received it and did not work properly, but I took it apart and um, I had to put some leather inside so it fit more taut. It was really loose and wiggly and the button didn't work, but I did get it to work. So, this is what we have here. And this is beautiful, just the display, just like the last bedside dagger. They're not really sold as bedside daggers, but I call them that because that's what I use them for. Okay. Throwing knives. These are some of my smaller ones, stainless steel, twin set. Um, people ask often when you're throwing a knife, do you do it by the blade or the handle? It depends. You want to hold it by whichever end is light, and that will vary knife to knife. And also you can find a sweet spot of the balance uh, to 
to help determine that if you just can't tell by holding it. But you'll get a feel for it if you play around for them. But um, what you want to do, the reason I like to throw it by the light end, okay, and in this case, the light end is the handle, is that the heavy part is at the top, so when you throw it, laws of physics and gravity are working for you in your favor with the heavy end wanting to throw around and helping the spin on the takeoff. Whereas if you throw it the other way, you still can do it, but it doesn't seem to respond quite the same. But again, this is something you can play around with and see for yourself. You'll get a feel for it. Uh, you can try throwing all kinds of things, even forks, butter knives. I like that these are very fresh and easy to conceal. Good girl! She's a puppy, but getting her big girl bark on. These are very pretty, but they're awkward to throw. But, you know, I really appreciate the design and everything, you know. Um, also, sometimes when it might not stick here, it might catch here on one of these little side things. Kind of has the quality of the Chinese throwing star, but not quite. These are my favorite throwing knives. These are a lot like the first ones I showed you that are little, but these are a bit bigger. Well, they're different. They're not exactly the same. I really like this design in the way it's got this little thing for your finger or your hand or your, your thumb if you need to use it, you know? Okay, my pride and joy, I'm going to show you here. But first I need to let you know and remind you I have a love affair with metal and alloys. And I collect railroad spikes. I have this gorgeous hand forged knife made from a railroad spike. Look at that. Here's what helps give it away. The artisan who forged this, he was so enthralled with my enthusiasm of the beauty of his work that he gave me the very first knife he ever met and I or made <laughs> the first one he met the first one he made, and you will see how he's progressed. Uh, but I love how he drilled these holes, graduating from big to tiny. It was polished and real shiny when he sent it, but I didn't oil it down like he suggested, and I don't mind that it's rusting. It gives it kind of this sci-fi, futuristic, road warrior, apocalyptic feel, you know? But this knife feels really good, and I like how this fits the back of the hand. The first knife he ever made <laughs> is this out of a railroad spike. So you can see how crude it is compared to this. And he advanced from this to this in one month. Okay? So when I bought this, he had just been making these for one month. And you see how he came along. I really like this one though. It looks like some sort of, oh god, medieval, archaic relic of days gone by. Like some prehistoric knife used somewhere in the world. Um, I also have swords. Let's raise our camera a bit. Okay, I have this sword with the uh, brass dragon handle. I forget what they call this on the sword. It has a name. Is it an anvil? But it's to protect your hand in battle. Um, this also has the uh, blood grooves cut into it as well as a beautiful etched embossed metal design. 
that's very floral and organic with vines and leaves. Okay, this is made for dance and all dance swords for oriental art performances um, are balanced, but I find I can balance about any sword. It doesn't have to be made for dance, but you'll see that it has these little teeth cut into it and it helps it kind of bite into the hair, okay? Because when it's real smooth and your hair, hair is silky, it wants to slip around a bit, okay? But this, this is a very well-balanced knife, okay? I like it a lot. But my favorite sword for performing is my Turkish scimitar and nobody heckles a performer with a scimitar. It also has brass handles with this beautiful falcon bird tip handle. Uh, this one started rusting right away. It was real shiny, but I didn't want to oil it because I put it on my head. And right away, it started rusting wherever my thumb or fingerprints were. And see, that's odd. You think the fingerprints would help prevent the rusting from the natural oils. This sword is very heavy. But I could dance on and walk around with this one all day. Very well balanced. Beautiful, beautiful scimitar. This is not my entire knife collection, but these are some of my favorites. And my latest addition is this machete. And I christened it recently, cutting through some tropical vines and foliage in my backyard. I also tested out how well it worked compared to the axe and the pole saw. And this was definitely great for vines and kind of thumb sized things you need to like slash through. And it also has the uh, serrated edge for cutting using like a saw. Um, this is wonderful. It's really helped me out a lot. Because before I was having to go out with whoppers and trim everything and you know you're doing like one at a time. Whereas this you can come through like you're going through a jungle and just clear it all at once. So uh, I think this was a great investment. Um, let's see. I also have, well, these are kind of reminiscent of the finger pokers. They weren't really knives, but they're these rings, and uh, they're steel, and I have four of them, and you put them on all your knuckles, and uh, it's uh, basically a bird skull. Ooh. Um something even sharper than the finger pokers I have are these brass fingertips. I don't know what to call them, but they're for dance and from Thailand. These are extremely sharp on the tips. I cannot emphasize this enough. And they tend to wear them like this with the tips pointing up. It's very dramatic. You know, woo. you could do them down, but it doesn't seem to have the same effect visually for the performing arts. Okay, so that is my knife collection, and I would say my favorite, well, I, I have different favorites for different reasons, but my favorite is the railroad spike. <laughs> I also use this as a bedside knife. Um, as for the most beautiful, again, they all have their own beauty and personality, but I really do like the knives that have this, um, this swoop here, just like we saw in the last knife. There's something in that curvature I find very sexy. Okay, thank you for tuning in. Feel free to comment. Even better is if you post a video comment showing us your own knives. Um, it could be a whole collection or just one. Uh, and especially
especially if you've made it or it's hand forged or custom or anything like that. I'd really like to see it. Okay, thank you and bye-bye.